lot of instruction, uh, drilling to let these guys understand how we want to play defense defensively. How much five on five work did you do with any? Uh, did not do much five on five work because I want these guys to understand the, the, the details of what we're trying to accomplish defensively and how we want to play establish that early. Is it fair to say that, that defense is, is what you want to be the backbone of this team and it's part of its core identity? Absolutely. Every night we have to be able to hang our hat on playing hard and playing defense. Um, offense will find a way to take care of itself, but defensively we got to hold our feet to the fire. How would you describe like, that defensive identity that you're trying to build? What do you kind of want that to look like when you actually see it on the court? I want, we want to be disruptive. We want to make sure that teams, when they come into the building, that they understand that they've got. To, they're going to feel us. They're going to. They're going to pressure the basketball. We're going to be into the basketball. We're going to fly around with five guys on a string, covering for one another. Do you have an expectation or a goal where you want this team to be in terms of defensive rebounding percentage relative to the rest of the league? Like a top 10, top 5 type thing? I think we're not going to put a number on it. I've, I've said this before, just talking about the daily process of doing the work. I think that's what we just have to make sure that we understand what we're trying to do and why we're doing it. Um, and, and from that, the numbers will take care of themselves. Coach, uh, Coach you, are you, are you spent you? some time with these guys in, in summer league, especially the young guys. How much did that lay the foundation for what you guys did today? No, that's a great question. It's, it's, it's funny that some of the veterans were some of the ones that we had, you know, have to call back in some drills because the, the, the young guys that were in summer league had actually gone through these things before, so they saw it before. So that was actually really good to see that some of the, the young guys were taking lead in some of it, explaining some of the drills that they saw. Are you an all-in guy or kind of an ease way in? As, you As we go through this, I mean, obviously we have to have guys ease into what they need to learn, uh, but I think you can't skip steps in laying the foundation for the fundamentals of, of, of the game. And so that's, you know, how we get into the basketball, our, our stances as we're playing defense, our activity with our hands. Those little things there are the details that you can't skip. Well, any, any injuries today, and, and what's the status for J.I. and for Markel? Uh, those guys are on th their protocol for what they're doing with, with, with the rehab situation. There's no timetable, but again, it, what they're doing the things with their protocol that, that helps them get their way back in. Any other injuries? First, first camp for uh, Jalen and Franz, how do you think they looked out there in their, their first run? I, they brought a ton of energy. I, I think they, they bought in. They understand some of the things that we're doing. And, and they're working their way into the, you know, the NBA, the, the terminologies and different situations. But both of those guys also played summer league. So them being able to see it was good. What are your expectations for rookies, those two rookies specifically entering a practice like this one? What were your expectations? Well, Josh, I think it's just for them to continue to learn, to continue to understand and, and realize the foundation we're laying for what we're doing defensively, how we're getting after it, how we're trying to play. With all of the things that you had to be cognizant of and all of the play, all 20 players you have to watch, did you get a sense as to how quickly they're picking things up? Well, that's the good part about filming practice. You can always go back and look at it. You know, the energy was fantastic. The enthusiasm with these guys was fantastic. But it, it, it's going to be good to go back and look at the film to see exactly, you know, where we can improve some things, what we're missing, things that we need to look at. That's the good part about being able to watch film on it. I'm, I'm sure you'll go back and watch it film, but having completed your first practice, first NBA training camp practice as a head coach, how, how do you feel? Um, I think I, I've said this before. I mean, we are trying to lay a foundation. It's, 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 it's basketball. These guys are out here with enthusiasm, with energy, and I think that's all you can ask for them right now for playing hard and trying to help lay this foundation for what we're doing. How much does the team's versatility so far stand out to you in your one training camp session? It's actually really exciting. You know, you have different guys in different positions. You're playing one person's four, one person's a five, one person's a three, one person's two. So again, it, we, we talk about positionless, and that's what's great about it, that you can put guys in many different positions. And we have such bas high basketball IQs, you can put guys in different positions to succeed. Will your team practice tonight? We will. And will that be a non-contact uh, session, or will that be a, a contact session? Tonight will be a contact session. Uh, today was a non-contact session, like I said, laying the foundation for teaching and understanding exactly where we need to go slow step by step. And as tonight, we'll get after it, and then we'll be able to watch a little bit more and see how they've done. Yeah. Will that include scrimmaging? By uh, by we'll see how the practice goes. We'll see how the guys pull up after this one, and then we'll kind of have a feel for it. Traditionally, once the first one's out of the way, do you see things picking up exponentially after that? Uh, I believe that these 
the guys will start to get a feel and a rhythm for what's going on. I think that's probably the first two practices. I think after we get through tonight, we'll, we'll see how their rhythm is and how they feel towards things and what we have implemented and how they kind of respond to it. Everyone good? Julia, do you have a question? Oh, yeah. Uh, Jamal, I, I was just speaking with Bo Bamba. He's been talking a lot about wanting to work on his uh, IQ in the offseason. He said that he was working with you kind of one-on-one -on -one and some of that. What have you seen from him in terms of growth coming in this year? That's great. You know, I want him to be the loudest guy in the gym when it comes to coverages and, you know, anchoring the defense in a lot of ways. So his ability to have a high basketball IQ and see what's coming before it happens with a lot of defense or offenses, that's going to be great for him. Some of the hallmarks of a Jamal Mosley practice now you've had one official one? Um, just a lot of energy. He's a big energy guy. We have a um, we have some type of bell that we ring on like hustle plays and all these different type of things. So that's went off a couple times a day. So it's just I think the biggest thing is just energy with him. He spent a lot of his time talking about defense and how that's mm -hmm. going to be a massive emphasis this year. How do you see yourself fitting into kind of what your defensive role is going to look like? Um, sure. Just be guarding some of the bigger guards and kind of stuff that they had me doing last year and even before that. So. Probably much of the same. It's a young team, but is this one of the more versatile teams that you've been on in the NBA as far as positionless type players? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's just the way the NBA is going. Um, it's kind of leaving from you know, a typical one, two, three, and just guys that can kind of play a plethora of different positions and, you know, can do different things on the court. So uh, I think that's kind of where we're at. We have some guys who are bigs that can play all the way up to the three, all the way up to the five. We have guys that can play the one all the way to the three. So. Yeah, we have a, a lot of different pieces. How much different is what Jamal and his assistant coaches are asking compared to what <coughs> Steve Clifford's coaching staff asked for defensively? Um, I mean, we just some slight differences in you know the way we uh, tag the roller. Um, some of the on-ball pick and roll defense is a little different, but for the majority, it's pretty much the same. The base principles are the same, so um, it's. You know, there's a few differences, but not much. We were told when we asked that you guys didn't do any five on five, and mm -hmm. in a circumstance like that, is it possible? What did you see from Jalen and Franz, considering it was their first official NBA training camp? I mean, we we more just did you know more more drills today and got some um, some teaching points out of the way. So I'm sure tonight we'll have a lot more to to go through when it comes to plays, playing. So we haven't really seen too much now, but tonight we should. How, how comfortable do you feel from what he's asking from you? Uh, I mean, I feel good. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing that everybody kind of asked me to do is kind of come in and, you know, take shots, score, you know, bring energy. So uh, it's pretty much the same. Have you had any chance either in the voluntary work that you guys have done leading up into this or today to ever be guarded by either Jalen or, or Franz? And if so, um, I mean, uh, with some pickup games, they've, you know, they probably, I think Franz has probably been guard on me a little more than Jalen has. But, um, yeah. What's your sense of what Franz can bring on that end of the court? He has length. He has length, size, he moves well. Um, and that's a, that's a, those are really the things that you kind of, you can't really replace. And he, he does a really good job of, you know, just putting himself in a good position. I think the more he learns and the more he goes through training camp, he'll start to get more you know, adjusted to, you know, how things are run, but he uh, he has a lot of potential. Can he keep up with someone as yeah. ag agile as you? Oh, me? Oh, can he keep up with me? Oh, uh, uh, we'll see. I mean, I hope so. <laughs> we'll see. With, with the new staff, is the first practice kind of a get the field type thing, and then you take off from there, or did you guys really just die? Um, we went into a lot of, we just went through our principal stuff. We went through a lot of principal-based uh, defenses, some of the, the offensive stuff, but it was more about the defensive uh, adjustments, positions, uh, you know, responsibilities, and you know, such forth. So, pretty much defensive based. So you expect to really get after them just getting. Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. These guys are all new. I don't know. We're gonna see. <laughs> We're gonna see. Thank you very much. What was that like, Jalen? And how was it different from the summer league stuff where there weren't as many veterans? Um, first of all, it was a lot of fun, an extreme amount of fun. Like, guys were laughing, talking, um, you know, locked in, you know, just, just good vibes today. Um, and then having the vets here, uh, just a lot of little things, small talk, you know, and little things to pick up, you know, as you're talking with them. Um, so really just a lot of knowledge out here on the court today, a lot of enthusiasm, uh, you know, and it made, made for a great first session. Jalen, uh, your coach 
coach was emphasizing a lot of defense when he was speaking with us earlier. Just as you're getting into more guarding more NBA players, what's the biggest difference between guarding in college and then making that jump up to the pros? Um, you know, some some tough shots are great shots for them, you know, and, and they're going to go in. Uh, so really, you know, for me and a couple of people I've talked to, you know, on the team, uh, some of the older guys, you know, said like, it's all right if you play great defense and they hit a shot. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, don't dwell on that possession. Keep it going and, you know, make things tough for them all night. So, you know, I think the biggest adjustment there is, you know, just kind of understanding that guys are going to make shots. You know, it's all good. But, you know, just stay locked in as the game goes on. Just one training camp session, but could you already tell the versatility on this team as far as the position was kind of basketball you got to want to play? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, in a way that we can all fly around the court. You know, it makes it makes it a lot easier when we need to rotate and, um, you know, the ball swing and the guys are flying out to different positions. And you don't have to, you know, call a red or a switch or go trap to get the ball out of their hands because there's a mismatch. Um, so, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, it was a great, I don't know. I'm just happy. <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. You go. Coach kind of mentioned you, you'll be going to another practice tonight. How do you kind of prepare yourself for going to a morning workout and then a, a, a evening workout like that? Um, just make sure I stay mentally and physically sharp. Uh, you know, take care of my body, go do some treatment recovery after this. Uh, you know, maybe take a little nap, put some good food in my system, you know, and then just kick back. Uh, you know, they really emphasize that as we finish up this first session, like, don't shoot after the buzzer goes off, like, with no extra dunks running around, like, go get off your feet, you know, do what you got to do to get ready for tonight uh, for when we go live and start hitting. What were your emotions like heading into this, either before you went to sleep last night or woke up? this morning or drove over here? Uh, it was really this morning. I'm not really a morning person, but I was up wide-eyed and ready to go when I woke up this morning. So um, i really just excited. Uh, you know, I got out here, got my work in early, uh, a couple shots up, and then I actually went in the locker room uh, for the last couple minutes uh, before we started. And, you know, I like to put on gospel music and, you know, it's kind of relaxing because so I was a little too amped up. You know, it's put me in a good mental state and to come out here and have a great day, you know, and that's what happened. What, what song did you put on? Uh, 10,000 10, reasons. Jalen, you went through a number of practices with the staff in summer league. How, how much did that experience help you out today as you were going through some of the same principles? A uh, ton. You know, just because we're, we're used to being around each other. You know, I understand how they like to coach, you know, the energy they bring, you know, and they understand, like, how I move and how I learn. So it makes it a lot easier for us to have conversation, you know, and, you know, get messages or points across. Um, so it was good, you know, being there in summer league, you know, getting adjusted and, knowing everybody and out of here so that, you know, there's not that adjustment period, you know, where you need to learn names, uh, you know, see how everybody works, you know, we can just go right into it. Coach said it was some of the vets that had to redo the drills because you guys had already done them. So you're smiling and laughing. So what, what's a funny story on who did it? So what? we were laughing about it. Uh, who was talking about it? It was me and, me and Franz were talking about it uh, after we had just finished and came and came back and the next group was going on. Uh, but during the summer league, I mean, we must have did that drill for about 15 minutes. And I think every group messed it up one time before they got it right as we were doing it. Um, and it's funny because it's a simple thing, but like, you know, you get so caught up into, you know, getting your man and, uh, you know, getting out to yours so you don't allow spray out threes or anything like that. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll clean it up next time we do it, hopefully. <laughs> how, how often does that bell ring? The bell rang a couple times a day. I think about four or five times. Uh, hustle plays, charges, blocks, um, diving on the ground, uh, things like that. So uh, one that, you know, got, I know me excited. I think the rest of the team excited, uh, you know, to make those plays because yeah, I want to ring the bell. <laughs> And like a coach does it, or do uh, sometimes coach? coach does it, sometimes we do it. Uh, we're playing, or we we're doing our shell drill. RJ took a charge and he ran over and rang it. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go over and ring it. I'm not gonna let a coach do it for me. <laughs> coach said a lot of the the first session today was just learning out terms and other things like that. How do you feel like you're picking those kind of things up? Uh, I feel like I'm picking it up well. Um, you know, they do a great job in you know really talking about it, going over it, you know, really methodical and you know talking through why we're doing it. You know, and not just saying, hey, you go here, you go here, and it's where we need to be, but kind of explaining it so you know why you're in a certain position and how quick you need to be there. Um, so, I mean, it's great. I'm picking it up well. Uh, you know, I think everybody else did a great job of it as well um, and try to put it into action later on this evening. Did you're, did you're in? Pretty, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, you've been a pretty vocal supporter of the women's game as well in the past. I know you're busy, but have you been able to catch any of the WNBA playoffs? And if so, do you have a pick for who you think is going to go all the way? Yeah, definitely. Um, I was hoping for Seattle. Uh, I'm a Seattle fan, so that, that overtime loss kind of stung. But um, uh, And then my hometown Lynx loss. So, you know, those are kind of my two picks early gone. Um, but I think I think Phoenix will take it. Yeah, that was really good. Did your NBA journey start draft night or did it start today? Um, my NBA journey started on draft night. 
um, when I came down here, I met everybody. You know, I got to talk to the coaches and the staff. Uh, you know, and from that night on, you know, my mind was turning, their minds were turning, um, trying to get ready for now, you know, and for a couple of weeks. So, uh, yeah, definitely, I'd say start on draft night. What, what was that like? What was that practice like? Uh, a lot of defense, uh, a lot of principles, um, kind of building our identity on that side of the floor and just, yeah, our habits that we need uh, for the season. Is it every, I mean, first NBA practice, what were your feelings like before before the day before the day started? Um, I wouldn't say I was too nervous. I mean, I saw other guys in the gym these past couple of weeks and obviously know the coaches in summer league really well. So um, I think we have a really cohesive group and um, everybody's super supportive. And even in this practice, I, it was like five times where I asked someone a question and everybody was super helpful. And um, I think that was, that was really cool for me. How much did, uh, did working with Coach Mosley and his staff from summer league, how much did that help kind of prepare you for this? How much was, how much was similar from what you guys were, were doing? A lot was similar, maybe a little uh, different um, kind of words to, to use, but um, you know, simple, simple, easy principles that we knew from summer league, and um, I think that made it easier for for us that were there uh, to adjust. Do you have a preferred position? Like, if you had to pick a position to play where you feel you're the strongest at, is there one that you would kind of side with? And how many positions can you play? Um, I mean, I played on the perimeter basically all my life, um, so. I mean, two, three are most of the times pretty similar um, in today's game. And um, I think as I grow a little bit more and, and get a little bit stronger, maybe I can play the 4-2 um, at a high level, hopefully. And um, I hope I can guard all the players in the league. I think that's that's one of the goals for me, and I think that determines what position you play at the end of the day. What have you noticed is the difference between guarding college players and guarding professional players so far? Um, the athleticism, one, I mean, these are grown men, they're so much stronger. Um, and then everybody's so experienced, um, just little details. I'm sure I'm going to see a lot more of that during the year and just pick, hopefully pick up on it too. Um, but yeah, guys are just a lot more experienced and know a little, little tricks of the game. As you're adapting between those different uh, positions that you're trying to play, how does your defensive mindset kind of shift, or do you have to, you know, change anything about the way that you approach your defense? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to have to learn a lot, and um, I'm sure things are going to come quick too, as you know, as we're going to play a lot of basketball during the year. So um, I'm going to ask questions, try to get better. Um, I think my approach on defense is not bad, but I'm sure I can get a lot better at it. Was there anything that you did that earned that bell getting wrong? Um, I didn't do anything. I think two people took a charge, and uh, that was funny. Um, those are the two only thing, times I can remember, but uh, I think it's a cool, cool idea to have that. It's just one training camp session, but could you tell how versatile this team is as far as positionless basketball guys being able to play different roles? Yes, for sure. And I mean, so many guys that are versatile are still out. Uh, Markel, uh, MCW, Chuma, um, and Jai, Jai, obviously. I think those, when, those, when those guys come back, I think that will give us a whole nother. Uh, level of versatility as well.